because of that injury, you had to wear an accessory, the goggles, that really kind of defined, you know, your style on the court. And then later on, we have the first, you know, pink out game that Crane still continues to this day. And you have a really good game, that first pink out game. You decide to wear the pink shoes for the entirety of your career at Crane. Talk to me about how the, that style on the court helped, uh, you know, helped you off the court socially. I know people would come up to you and talk to you about your shoes, your yeah. goggles. You would look up in the stands. You see kids wearing goggles. You see kids wearing pink shoes. How, how did it make you feel to see that the crowd and the fans really, you know, accepted you and, and really rocked with you because they were rocking your style basically in the stands mm-hmm. as you were playing? Yeah, man, it was definitely, it was, it was, it was interesting because I know that, especially with the goggles, I, you know, you always kind of think, the people that wear them, they kind of look funny, you know what I mean? Like, you think, oh, you're going to make fun of them, but then I ended up wearing them, and I'm like, man, now I have, like, a different type of respect for whoever wears goggles, because that is not easy, man. Like, if you don't right. get the right ones, they, they, they fog up, and, like, it's a whole thing, man. It's a whole, like, adjustment that you have to do, and, and it's just it's more than just putting the goggles on, and that, like, it, it takes some time, so definitely respect to a lot of people that, or everybody that wears them. Um, but yes, so a lot of people don't know this, but there was actually after I decided to keep wearing my the the pink shoes for like every game, there was one game that I actually forgot them that I thought I left them in the in the locker room, and um, but I did I I didn't have them, so I had to wear actually regular shoes, and I remember people started tweeting at me. Like, hey, man, like, what happened with the... Like, a lot of people started tweeting at me about it. And then that's kind of <laughs> when I realized, like, yeah, somebody was like, hey, man, like, my wife noticed you didn't wear the pink shoes. What happened? And, like, my kid, uh, and then... Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's kind of when I realized, I'm like, oh, wow, people, like, some people are actually, like, paying attention to this. Because I remember, right. like, nobody, <laughs> like, none of, none of you guys, like, none of the teammates were like, hey, man, what happened to... Like, no one, but, like, people on the outside, like, Mm-hmm. someone noticed and 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 i'm like oh wow this is actually catching some uh and then there were like little like articles and people like trying to like rate the style of players on, during the whole college basketball and then you know i'll be in there with like they say i look like a creative player because i had like the pink shoes and the goggles and then like i think one year like i had like a the, sleeve the sleeves or the yeah. like, socks or something so they said that i you know, mm-hmm. look like a created uh 2K players. <laughs> 2K. And, yeah. And then it was some funny comments, man. Like, I remember we used to go in the, in the yeah. Missouri Valley, and obviously it was a lot of love. Like you said, a lot of, like, our people loved it. And and, and I had people also mad at me. It's like, man, now I got to look for, to buy the pink shoes for my kids. I can't find any, and you know, like, stuff like that. So it's uh, it's kind of nice to see that I, I made it into a thing, at least while I was there. But mm-hmm. I remember when we used to go to other places, the student sections used to let me have it, but some of them were creative and, and, and I didn't take offense to it, but they yeah. used to say, yeah. like, say that I look like, you know, Kimball Slice, that like I was playing, I was playing, <laughs> I was playing uh, basketball in, in 3D with 3D glasses on and stuff like that. So it was, some of them were pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that was better be because, ruthless, man. It's crazy. <laughs> We were we were winning we were winning so it actually made it good because I was playing yeah. you know, so that kind of that's not good if like you are trying all these different things out and then you're not winning then that makes you an easy target but when you're winning and you're playing well there's not much they can say to you I mean they can say something but you basically shutting them off. I just remember thinking that following summer after I guess your sophomore year my freshman year. Uh, watching all the kids at camp with pink shoes and goggles on. And that's when I was like, yo, G's a fan favorite out here. Like, G could do no wrong. And I think part of that summer you spent with the Venezuela national team too. So it's like you weren't really around. But, you know, the rest of us who was working camps, who was around campus, you know, who, who saw those kids out uh, just in Omaha uh, in everyday situations, we really noticed like, yo, this this trend that you started is really taking off. Also, when Daryl was on the podcast, we talked about, I don't know if you remember, me, you, and him. It's funny that you mentioned a creative player on 2K. Me, you, and him <laughs> used to create our own players on 2K yep. and go on the yep. same team. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to win the NBA championship. I know, you man. That's, that, that's all those sure. accessories that you were wearing, you put them on your creative player. <laughs> so, like, that's why I'm laughing so hard right now. Yeah. 
Oh, it, I definitely was there. I, I didn't get my ideas from that when I decided to use them myself, but yes, they, they were definitely yeah. in the game. So I, I guess what I'm saying, some insults or some whatever, like when they're trying to like get at me, they were creative. Like they were good. Like, but yeah, I, uh, but I remember that too, man. That, that was fun times. So creating yourself and stuff, that's definitely fun, fun times. We had two great seasons. Uh, it was your junior and senior year. Uh, we won the Missouri Valley Tournament uh, twice. We won the Missouri Valley Regular Season Championship once. We made it to two NCAA tournaments. We beat uh, Alabama. Uh -huh. And then we beat uh, Cincinnati in the first round. And then those two uh, years, we lost to North Carolina once, and we lost to Duke. But you had two individual plays against both North Carolina and Duke that sticks in Crane fans' memory. The dunk over Tyler Zeller against UNC mm -hmm. and the dunk against Mason Plumley against Duke. Out of those two plays, which one was your favorite? <laughs> I think the, the, the North Carolina one was definitely good. I mean, that was such a fun game because we were also – in North, like we were there, it was basically there. there yeah, we were in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't know, it just meant because I know we were obviously we were trying to come back in the game, we're trying to try, and I don't know, it was like a hype play. There was a little bit of frustration in it just because, uh, you know, obviously we wanted to win, and like you know how those uphill games could feel, and um. And uh, I don't know, I th that felt good. Uh, that felt like, uh, like I said, it was kind of like a frustration play, but it worked out. And and I think it like, uh, maybe like it gives, I mean, obviously we didn't win, but it gave us a little boost. Like, okay, like we're here mm -hmm. too. Like, you know, we can, um, so yeah, I would definitely, definitely the, the no crowd. Like, I know the video, like, uh, I, you can, I think you can still find it on YouTube. It's out there somewhere. So, uh, but yeah, I definitely, I would definitely pick that. And the one that you had against Mason Plumley, bro, you literally moved him out of the way and just threw down a left-handed dunk, which for whatever reason, I found that that was kind of like your signature move. Instead of going to the right hook that most people would expect people to, uh, like, for you to go to because you're right-handed, you would just kind of give him that fake mm -hmm. and just go up hard with your left and just jam it over them. I saw you do it countless times, obviously, in practice. Sorry, you will, Artino, but it happened against you quite a bit. Oh, uh, but also, obviously, <laughs> in games, Jackie Carmichael, like, all those guys got a taste uh, of that move. So where did that, you know, come from? Because obviously, like, people would expect you to go with your right, but you would just spin back and dunk it with your left. Where did that move come from? Where did you learn it from? And uh, I'm sure you still use it to this day, right? I actually, I even after I left, I, it always works. Like, it usually, like, always works. I have gotten a few people like that still. <laughs> and, and just because, I guess, I don't, I'm not, like, I don't jump that high of, like, of like layup like some people jump off like a layup but I jump better off two and that kind of gets me close and then there's a little contact and people are expecting like you said exactly like you said people are expecting me to go back but I just keep going left because I'm a, I'm a right hander but a lot of my hooks actually are with my left like I use my left a lot or at least now I don't honestly I don't even remember how I was in college but I know that now I use my left hooks a lot and I think uh, just I mean my dad, I worked with my dad a lot too, like when I was off, like obviously off season. And um, and he knows that, like, it's just common sense. If you're a right handed player, I mean, people are going to push you to your left. If you're a left handed player, people are going to push you to your right. And it's usually how it goes. So most people are already like wired uh, to defend that way. So it's, it, it catches you by surprise because not only I'm not, it's not going to be a hook, I'm actually going to go for it. And with my, like, my elbow, I create a little surprise. And so it's like, once you're yeah. in there, it's kind of like, it's, yeah, it's, it, it puts you in. So I've been, def I, when I defend people, or, or they're good, like big, and I feel like I'm, like, you got to, like, oh, he might, he might, I think he might try the same thing on me. So, like, I have to, like, react quick because there's certain positions or situations that you get yourself into that if you don't react in a split second, it's too late. Like, you're going to be in a poster or you're going to be embarrassed. So it's 